السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. We have everyone إن شاء الله. So we are ready to continue. Everyone is here. Uh, if you are not here, please raise your hand. So everyone is here. You raised your hand because you're here or not here? Okay. Actually, before I start, I received two important questions. And I want you all to benefit from them. The first question is about what is next. We came to this program or any other program. We enjoyed the topics. We learned useful things. But then, how can we guarantee that we will benefit from that later on the long run? And that is important. The sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ كان عمله ديما Continuation. So, once you start something, continue. Keep it on. Put for yourself homework. Let your partners, your friends, let them review with you. Tasks. Every week, this is what we want to do. One topic from the workshop. Let's try to keep it on. So that's the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Never ever let the past be better than the present or the future. No. Always, your day is better than yesterday. Tomorrow is better than today. That's the challenge. You are always improving. Now, I will be talking, inshallah, about that in the last session after Isha, about self-development. But this is what I wanted to share, you because, to share with you because it is an issue. Uh, we notice that, subhanAllah, many times a program is nice, we enjoy it, we like the topics, but then that's it. That's the last of it. No. Make sure that this is the beginning for a new thing. That new thing never stops. Subhanallah, even in the Sunan, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one time he missed the Sunnah of the Dhuhr prayer, after the prayer. So, there was a delegation, that's why he couldn't pray it. He was busy with them. So, he had only time after Asr. Only after Asr he was able to pray. So, Umm Salama radiallahu anha, she sent her son to whisper in the ear of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What are you doing? This is after Asr, just to remind him. After he finished, he told her, the delegation came and they kept me busy. So I couldn't pray the Sunnah. And now I'm praying it. Since the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed it after Asr, what happened? This became Sunnah. Every single day, ما زال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يصلي ركعتين بعد العصر حتى توفاه الله. He kept doing that. We know the general practice after Asr is their prayer. No, until Maghrib. That's why scholars differ. In the school of thought of Imam Ahmad, it is a Sunnah to pray after Asr two rakah based on that hadith. Other scholars said no. This is pertaining only to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. The point is not the fiqh disagreement. The point is what. The continuation. The Prophet ﷺ never started something except that he continued doing it. He finished it. So, make it a point that today, this is what we took. This is what we can work on. Next week, we have a revision. We have some workshop. Well, next month, we see where are we now and what can we do. So, yes, I agree. It is important that Tonight is not the last of it. Actually, tonight is the beginning for a new thing to continue. That's one. Another one is about the volunteers. The silent workers. The ones who work behind the scenes. The ones who make any program possible, like this one and other ones. Uh, many times, they miss on the core of the program itself. Uh, they have to arrange for the logistics, they have to work on something, they are outside, so what happens in the process, they miss. True, this is like a tax you have to pay. The solution is what? Always rotate. People who are doing the work, others are volunteering, not just to do the work, but volunteering to guarantee that nothing of the program is missed. You, brother, 
Jazakallah khair for what you did. You made that possible. And because of that, you missed the topic. Here it is. We wrote it, and here it is ready for you. Just read it. Of course, it will not be like sitting. Yes, but this is a price that has to be paid. So today you volunteered to be outside. Tomorrow, in another program, you volunteer, but in something else. So you guarantee that no one keeps missing the same thing. And you guarantee that there is always someone. So, true. You have to appreciate the work of the volunteers. Because without that, no program would be possible, including this one. So that's another thing, yes. Uh, next topic that we have on the list is about gender interaction, male and female interaction. And this is something that I noticed here. Now, it is worldwide issue, but I was shocked actually to see here the standards are low. Uh, what does that mean? You see brothers and sisters, they are praying, mashallah, and they are practicing. But then for some reason, they are just interacting freely without any rules. I want to remind you of two simple things. First of all, the essence, the principle of the interaction is the prohibition, not the permissibility. That's number one. What does that mean? Whenever you want to interact with the other gender, with the, other, with the opposite sex, in principle, it is prohibited. Why? Because interaction is part of the senses. What does that mean? Looking, touching. And in principle, are you allowed to look at the other gender? In principle, no. That's why the principle of interaction is what? Prohibition, not permissibility. And that is very important to observe. Allah Azza wa Jal said in Surah An-Nur, قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُبُّوا مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ وَيَحْفَظُوا فُرُوجَهُمْ Tell the believing men to lower their gaze and to safeguard their modesty. That is better for them. وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ The next ayah. And tell the believing women also. So this is for men and women. So that's number one. Very important rule. In principle, it's prohibited. So you want to interact with the opposite gender. Why? You have to justify it. Not the other way around. I can interact unless it is not allowed. No. You cannot interact unless you have a reason. That's why scholars discussed when can a man look at a woman who is foreign? And they classify women to six types. The mahrams, mother, daughter, sister, the wife, looking for marriage, before being married, looking for marriage, khitbah. For necessity, a doctor or a judge. And then all other women. So everyone has a ruling. But in principle, what is the principle? It is what? Prohibited. That's number one. And you can tell, uh, I don't know how many of you, because all of you are students, right? How many of you have part-time job? Or you work uh, in an environment where you have other workers? Men or women? Did any one of you work? You have? So, did you have female partners or co-workers? Okay. Uh, sisters, any one of you? Yes? No? Yeah, you don't have to work. All the brothers do the hard work. Okay. So, let me ask you this. First day of work, you are new. How would you interact with the opposite sex? All by the book, yes or no? Yes or no? A year from now, what happens? And that's what I notice. I see people laughing, exchanging jokes, and as if they are mahrams, subhanallah. Where are the, where is the barrier? Remember first day? That's how it should be every single day. But we got accustomed. Uh, we knew each other so it's okay no it's not okay <laughs> even if you work for years rules are rules they don't change in principle you don't interact unless there is a reason that's number one and there are many details i will try to explain number two 
when you interact with the opposite sex, remember that she could be your sister or your daughter. And that helps you a lot. How would you like others to interact with your daughter? Uh, maybe that's hard to imagine for most of you, but your sister. That's helpful because how you like others to interact, that's how you should remember. We have desires as others have desires. No, no, my intention is noble. If your intention is noble, it has to be reflected in actions. Whether you are a co-worker or otherwise. So, those two principles help a lot. In principle, it is prohibited. So, what I notice, and that's what some people tell me. 11.30 p.m., when almost everybody is sleeping, she receives a text message. Who is it? Uh, my co-worker. Okay. It's about work at that time? No, no, it's a joke. MashaAllah. Yeah, what's the big deal? Come on. I told you, this is the gateway of the shaitan. The shaitan does not come and tell you, go ahead and commit zina. The shaitan is smart. He tells you, what's the big deal? It's just a joke. What's the big deal? You are only you and her alone together. It's okay, you are co-workers. What's the big deal? Let's invite her for, what's the big deal? Suddenly you notice that you are laughing, you are touching, you are talking for hours, you are... So, no. From the beginning, stop. Do not interact unless you have an evidence. One way to help, and I find this really useful, and I advise everyone to do it. When you interact with the opposite sex, have a third party. I texted her this joke. <laughs> Would you like your mother also to be texted that joke? See, you're laughing. Is it about work at this late hour? Fear Allah, because others also, they have families. So, no. Subhanallah, the kuffar now, after the movement of Me Too and all the uh, sexual abuse that they suffered from, now they are implementing Islamic principles. Companies, they are doing that not because they love Islam, but because they want to, 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 to protect their reputation. They want to save money on lawsuits that there was sexual abuse. Why? Because they were alone. So always, for your own sake, have a third party present. Don't be alone. For your sake and for her sake. What about phone calls? Even phone calls. Imagine if someone else is listening, her father. Uh oh Yeah, well, I'm not proposing to her. Exactly, that's the point. She is a foreigner. So, because even if no one is listening, remember that Allah Azza wa is listening. Remember that Allah Azza wa is watching. Honestly, I I'm telling you, I was shocked here to see the standards are very low. Uh, men and women, they have lunch together. They, what is this? Oh, we are co-workers. So what? In principle, you shouldn't be even looking at the other gender. Allah says, قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُضُّ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ Shaitan is very smart. He doesn't tell you directly, go ahead and commit zina. No, but he gives you easy way, step by step. And he's very patient. Let it take one year, two years. And the killer, that's what I notice. Uh, she is a potential candidate for my marriage. Ya Allah. If she is a potential candidate, go and do the right way, the proper way. Go and propose and ask her hand from her family. Yes or no, that's it. Because that's again a gateway from the shaitan. Uh, she might be my wife. No. How are you dealing with her? She is a foreigner, that's it. In principle, it is prohibited. And subhanAllah, in the Quran, we have a beautiful example. 
the story of Musa alayhi salam in Surah Al-Qasas. وَلَمَّا تَوَجَّهَ تِلْقَاءَ مَدْيًا قَالَ عَسَى رَبِّي أَنْ يَهْدِيَنِي سَوَاءَ السَّبِيلِ When Musa alayhi salam ran away from Fir'aun and his people and he turned to Madian and he prayed to Allah to guide him. When he arrived Madian, when he arrived at the well of Madian, the water of Madian, that's the story. He saw two women. Musa alayhi salam was muscular, he was strong. And he was young at that time, he wasn't old. So he saw something strange. Two women are not competing with men. But still they are there where they shouldn't be there. Anyone else would either care less about that or would take advantage of the situation. Those are, let's approach them, let's have their number. No. He said what is necessary only. What's the matter with you? Look how they responded. They said what is necessary and that's it. Did they exchange jokes? What's cooking? Good looking? No. They told him our father is old and we cannot compete with men. We wait until they leave only then. And subhanallah, this story is an essence of gender interaction. Because nowadays, what people want, the kuffar, they want from the Muslims, that any field there are men, women should be involved. And that's not right. Allah said, وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُ كَالْأُنْثَى <laughs> Equalizing two different things, that's injustice. That's just wrong. We have different responsibilities. So trying to equate those different responsibilities, that's a problem. That's a Western a disbelieving idea. We shouldn't adopt that. So, this story is very beautiful because he asked them, what's the matter? They answered and he did what is necessary and that's it. فَسَقَى لَهُمَا He did what, the, what every pious would do. He did the right thing. He watered for them and he left. He didn't wait for payment. He didn't ask for their phone number. Let's have dinner one day. No. What did he do? He prayed to Allah. قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي لِمَا أَنزَلْتَ إِلَيَّ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَقِيرٍ See, Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us this story for a reason. These simple details, the Quran does not mention simple details unless there is a reason. فَجَاءَتْهُ إِحْدَاهُمَا تَمْشِي عَلَى اسْتِحْيَاءِ How important the way that she was walking. That Allah Azza wa Jal described the way that she was walking. Subhanallah. Why nowadays there are women, they walk, I would feel ashamed to walk in front of them. I would try to be on the side. Tamshi ala stihya, she was walking with shyness. Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us how she was walking, which was a reflection of her character. Qalat, what did she say? Let's have dinner, dinner together. Inna abi yad'uka, it is my father. It's not me. Although they are already in charge of the business. They already said that their father is an old man, but still. Inna abi yad'uka. My father is inviting you. To give you a reward. To reward you for what you've done. And not only that. They saw in him an excellent candidate. And there is nothing wrong with that. Khadija radiallahu anha, she proposed to the Prophet sallallahu Nowadays when someone does that, oh, definitely there is something wrong. But she didn't do that directly. Here in the story, the same thing. Qalat ihdahuma ya abati, oh my father. Istajirhu, hire him. It's win-win. Qala inni uridu an unkihaka ihda ibnatayya hatayya. So always, that's what a respectful woman would do. She referred the matter to her father, even though she was in charge, even though her father was old. 
she didn't take matters into her own hands. So this is what we need in our time. And that's what elevates women. When Allah Azza wa Jal said, Ya Maryam, inna Allah astafaki wa tahharaki wa astafaki ala nisa'il alameen. Allah has chosen you, purified you, and chosen you above all the worlds. Why? Because she was so pretty? She was celebrity? Because of her nudity? No, because of her chastity. That's what elevates a woman. So, these are few simple things. In principle, it is haram. Whenever you want to interact with a foreign woman, with someone from the opposite sex, remember it is haram. What is the justification? You have a justification, go ahead, and it is limited to that. You don't have, stop. Why not? Islam says so. Allah says so. That's why. Don't open. Allah Azza wa Jal said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la tattabi'u khutuwati shaytan. Do not follow the footsteps of the shaytan. Because the cost later for not following that is very severe. We've seen the consequences. At the moment, the heat of the moment, when the shaitan is in control, yeah, it looks nice. But then later, when you regret it, then later when you see that this is happening to your own family, to your own children, to your own daughters, or to your sisters, then you would regret it. Oh, but it's okay, my family, they are chaste, while the others, they are not, so it's okay for them. Even if it's okay for them, it's not okay with Allah Azza wa Jal. You are a Muslim. So that's what Allah tells you. So I don't have to talk much about this because it's very clear. And I told you before that we spoke about communication and this is related to it. It's important, not just in da'wah, not just in volunteering, but for you as a Muslim. Listening is one of the essential qualities for every Muslim. Allah Azza wa Jal said, وقالوا about the kuffar وقالوا they said the kuffar لو كنا نسمع أو ناقل ما كنا في أصحاب السعير the first reason for them to be in hellfire had we only listened hearing doesn't mean listening we continue after the salah insha'Allah